Here I am, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Man Manga Boy Red Manga. We've got to start with, ooh, whoa, whoa. It's a world-class favorite. You know the one. You know the only. Tatsuki Fujimoto 22 to 26. Uh, this was really good. I did enjoy this quite a lot. There's a little bit of a lead in kind of to, <laughs> there you go, to look back. Um, his one shot that was written earlier on. This series gave me a little bit more insight to look back, but um, I definitely still like all, all of these one shots a lot more than look back. This Demon Girl one was like extra creepy. I don't know that I was a big fan of it. Fujimoto kind of seems like a jerk when like, you're reading his like uh, why he do these things. He always just reads it to prove people wrong of things. And I'm like, dude, just let things go, man. Some people just be dumb. And that's just my opinion on it. But yeah, I mean, the artwork in this is really good. If you are a fan of Tatsuki Fujimoto's work, I mean, then you know what to expect. A bunch of weird, kind of gruesome things for the most part. Uh, typically not your shonen kind of a thing, yet still somehow in a shonen volume. Uh, even though probably Volt is more better suited in like a senin volume. I don't know where to put this right now. Maybe there. Anyways, um, see how I like slap sometimes? <laughs> Anyways, uh, Elusive Samurai, Volume 6. I like this one a little bit more than the last. This one's more focused on um, this kid right here initially. So this is the grandfather of the, or grandson of the Sua clan. And he's got really silly faces. The author even like writes about how he made such silly faces. And so he loves it. Uh, this guy right here, I think it starts with the G. It's like Gao, Gin, something like that. Um, mm -mm 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 -mm. He is going to kind of have a, again, by that was it. He's going to have a rival with this guy with a Tengu mask right here. So the Tengu mask guy calls him like a stupid charlatan. He's like, you got trash magic. You're not even a real ninja, is you? And then he's like, we're a dude, we're a ninja. And so then, you know, he gets played. And then he has to prove himself towards the end of the volume, which he does. We also have a little bit of a gambling round, uh, which was interesting as well. But yeah, this was a lot more interesting to me. I don't know, maybe I just don't like the big battles as much, probably because I don't know the characters as well. Um, but this one I liked a lot more because you get more character moments. I feel like that's more interesting uh, than the big battles. <clears throat> we also get to see the villain kind of, I don't know if he's gonna eat this guy or if he's just drooling at him to heal him, but he's like, close your eyes and I'll cure you. And then he's like, oh, I think you have to write it now. And he's drooling into his mouth. What? My wife would vomit. She hates that shit. But yeah, Elusive <laughs> Samurai is a little bit better than what it was beforehand. I like this a lot better than the war arcs that were going on earlier. Uh, Kubo won't let me be invisible. I really feel like there's still no conflict. There's no... I, I don't know what's keeping this series going anymore. Why is it going? It's just like cute moments of the main characters. And that's fine, I guess, but it's not enough to like keep me invested. It's like, yeah, I get it. They're cute. Yeah, I get it. They're interested in each other. Yeah, I get it. Everybody knows except the main characters and they kind of know. It's like, I don't know. I can only get so involved in it like that. So everybody's reflecting on the progress that, um, you know, our main character is making and how he is like becoming more and more visible. Uh, they're like, oh, Shiraishi, I noticed you got your picture taken in the camping trip. You're going to be in the yearbook now. Usually we have to like do a quick add on last minute and Photoshop you in, but this time you're like really in it. And that's like, okay. And then like this time, like her voice, um, she had like laryngitis or something like that. I was like really confused by this. Uh, like she puts that her throat hurts. Not that like she has laryngitis or something like that. So I'm like thinking to myself, okay, you have a sore throat. Like just talk, no big deal. But then like she talks at the end and she's like, eh, 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 eh. and I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> That's not what I thought. I thought you said your throat hurts. Not that you have laryngitis. Uh, so <laughs> I was like, what? Um, <laughs> we also talk about um Shiraishi and his brother Seita and how he kind of helped raise him and things like that and how he's excited to raise him pretty much how Ryushi is like the best person in the world or Shiraishi rather and he does nothing wrong after this he doesn't go in the tent with Kubo even though 
every high school boy probably would go in the tent whether or not they do anything or not but like still i think a high school boy would rather be with the girl than just sitting outside while the girl's inside even though she's like please come in <laughs> i don't think any high school boy would be like eh, nah, i'm gonna stay out here in the in the cold <laughs> it's like no i would i don't think so i don't i don't imagine any boy would do that who's in high school like if you said no don't go in then yeah i would say probably they wouldn't go in but come in mm, no the rules are actually the boys sleep in a separate tent than the girl and so i'm gonna stick that rule they're like really okay you even hit puberty yet guy damn <laughs> a blue box volume two or four wow two man can you imagine so blue box is really cool right now we're having a little bit of a log triangle this is what i'm talking about right now okay blue box you see these two right here it's like yep this is the one if you guys are going to get one rom-con shonen jump i know cool will be invincible looks super cutesy and it really is but like really just please get blue box it is so much better every i feel like every time i read kubo i've got blue box with me and it just is like it makes kubo feel that much more like missing something because i'm like literally contrasting it to in my opinion a superior series blue box has um anyways a, a, you know a real goal going on we've got a love triangle happening we've got um the main character the the woman here you know she's like ah you know i was kind of close to you but maybe we should kind of back off a bit i'm living with you after all and i was like oh shit like i can't believe she just said that to him and then he's like oh my god guys chi-san just told me i need to give her space and back off and then like hina's like mm, you know mata -san. Ooh, how you doing today and i'm like oh shit the love triangle so i'm like in it for that and like honestly right now i think hina hina should be getting it right now because like uh hina is is <laughs> a lot nicer to our main character um than she is that's for darn sure uh and you know he's progressing his badminton she's playing her ball uh she's playing her basketball we're really not so interested in the sports believe it or not i didn't I would not have believed that, uh, you know, if you told me that when I first started reading this, but we are really more interested in this festival that's happening here. Okay. We got the Yukata. I don't, I don't know the difference. They said they show you the difference between the Yukata and the Kimono at one point. I don't remember if it's this manga or if it was summertime rendering, but there's a little thing that tells you the difference. I don't remember what the difference was anymore, but it was pretty exciting, uh, for the fireworks, uh, for summer. And I was like thinking that he was gonna go chi last minute but like he ends up going with hina and then he finds chi last minute but chi is like man like what are you wearing girl shit and so that was like kind of surprising to me it's like damn i can't believe you would just be wearing like street clothes gym clothes uh it's the fireworks i feel like that's part of the fun is dressing up but uh yeah she just wears street clothes and she really doesn't seem very interested in our main character initially um she did seem somewhat interested in him and admired his like um effort and things like that but now she seems kind of i don't know distant in my opinion i it's hard for me to understand where she's going with this one of the, the characters who's like her childhood friend who's a little bit older mentioned that this is like a thing that she does uh i believe it was i believe it was kengo um yeah good friends with chi uh he um was like saying like she doesn't really get close to guys that much or really people so like be careful of these kinds of things like don't misinterpret that she's getting close to she really doesn't like let people touch her and she doesn't really touch people and like she touches him here and i was like thinking like ooh, sealing the deal right now we're moving our relationship up no so that was like woof you tricking me so, you know, that's how you tug at a man's heartstrings right there is you're, you're leading them on, you know, in the story. And so I'm pretty interested in where that's going. Like I was saying, less interested um, with Kubo because I feel like I know where it's going. I feel like it's not going to be any surprise. Blue Box, I'm like, oh, shit, he might end up with Hina, actually. Maybe not Chi. I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's where I'm more intrigued. Uh, Astro Boy Omnibus is three and four. So Astro Boy Omnibus is our big, thick guys right here. And they are covered in dialogue. They, if you guys thought that you could 
have a light novel in a manga in one and it just was not going to happen, you're wrong. You could have it. It's all over Astro Boy. There's just text on text on everywhere there's text, okay? That's not great. Anyways, we finish uh, Once Upon a Time with Gone with the Snow in Volume Omnibus 3. Gone with the Snow actually shows um, our uh, little... I think her name was like Scar Scarlet or something like that. She's the little grasshopper locust girl. She's out of here. She goes back home with her husband, which is very nice. And then she is able to enjoy the rest of her life. I think it actually was Scarlet. Um, so yeah, she goes off and she is going to go live with her husband. And that's very nice. And the end of that story and pretty much the end of Astro Boy. That's where it would end there. Uh, Astro Boy himself, though. Uh, the one that we were following actually dies in an earlier chapter. Look, look at all this. Look at all that text. That's just like a goddamn nightmare. What the f I am going to read all this. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so yeah, the, the Astro Boy that we were following who was worried about his energy, he actually uh, doesn't make it. And uh, we take over the new Astro Boy who was the original one born at this time. And um, it kind of gives us a refresher on Astro Boy's origin story, which I was like, oh, cool, because uh, they don't really show his origin story, at least they haven't yet in the regular manga. And so I was like, oh, that's very interesting to see Astro Boy through the circus. Like, they tell us what happened in, in words, but they don't show it. So I was really happy that they showed it. Um, that made it more interesting. This guy was really cool. His name is Garon. He uh, is, like, in pieces, and he can shoot, like, elemental attacks and things like that. He's pretty cool. Oh, my God. There's actually also a few Mustachio um, chapters, which is very cool, where Astro Boy is not like the main character or the main protagonist or anything like that. And we're focusing on Mustachio. He's going around like solving crimes like a private detective, which I thought was very interesting. Um, we have this youth gas one where Astro Boy has to fight Cobalt. And in my opinion, it was super anticlimactic. Um, we have Astro Boy. He has to fight this guy who wants to become a robot. That one was really cool. The uh, Jewel of Solomon, I believe it was called. I thought that one was really a neat story. Um, but honestly, if you were to say, I want to read Astro, Astro Boy, should I get the whole thing or should I just read a little bit of it or what? what's the deal? Should I read any of it? It's like, yes, I do think you should read some of it. I do think you should read probably like the intro to Astro Boy. I think you should read like the World's Strongest Robot or whatever it's called. I think it's something like that. And I think you should read the entirety of Once Upon a Time. So far, that's really all I can recommend. I do remember really liking Atlas. I thought Atlas was a cool character in the cartoon, the uh, Toonami anime. Um, but I don't super remember it very well. Um, but it is like such a slog to read through some of this because the stories are so, uh, what's the word for it? Disjointed, you know? So it will focus on Astro Boy in this one time period. And then it'll hop back to you know, earlier version of Astro Boy, and then it'll go back to the regular, you know, version that you just were reading about. And so it'll bounce around in time periods. It, supposedly Astro Boy was curated, um, you know, so that way it would be a easier continuity and easier to understand. But like, it is just everywhere. One second Astro Boy has 1 million horsepower, one second he has 100,000. One second Astro Boy has a family, the other one he doesn't have a family. It's like, man, I can't even keep up to know like what's happening. Uh, so it's not really well organized, and I guess it wasn't really published that way. Towards the later omnibuses, they kind of just really throw uh, the chapters together that they were just missing, it looks like. Um, I have a feeling the earlier chapters were just not as good as the later ones. The later ones include like Once Upon a Time. Those stories seem to be way more palatable. They have a lot less dialogue in it. More so doing the, the letting the pictures tell the storytelling, which is really good. Um, you know, it's not like I really hate reading as much as I say I do, but I mean, when you're comparing Astro Boy to like something like more modern, like look at this, look at this text, like where is it, right? There's like not nearly as much text. And if I had bleach in my hands, pfft, yeah, you could imagine that every page would be looking like, uh, can I even find it? Every page would be looking like this right here. <laughs> you know, it would be like nothing. So forget the fact that, <laughs> um, you know, Astro Boy is a manga. It, in my opinion, Astro Boy is more of a light novel at this point. Speaking of things that I do like, though, My Hero Academy Vigilante. So I believe this is the penultimate volume. Got one more to go. I think I've said that before, uh, but this time for real. Uh, we see um, number six have these different forms while he's fighting against our main man here. Um, you know, Koichi, he's really making himself a formidable opponent for number six. We see Knuckle Duster show up. 
Hell fucking yes, Hell, Hell Knuckle Duster shows up to fight him. You know, of course, originally number six was modeling over, um, was modeling up, uh, against the hero O'Clock. So he wanted to be like O'Clock 2, and then he met, you know, Knuckle Duster, who turned out to be Overdrive O'Clock, which was really cool. Uh, so yeah, this has been a really great volume. There was a ton of action in this volume, of course. You get like a pure energy form here of number six, which is also really insane. Koichi got his ass handed to him. There's all for one just watching the fight go on and like, you know, just fucking plotting. And I'm like, holy shit, like this is so cool. So I was really enjoying it. And like you can see he's got like a skeleton kind of a thing going on here. Because he's he's the idea is that he's pure energy and he's burning away his body to like be in this form. And so you can kind of see his rib cage, backbone, skull, that kind of thing right there. And obviously you can see it in different like shots you know, the bone structure as well. So this is like a really cool design. I thought that, that they did a really good job with that. Uh, and you can see Koichi just giving it his all and like slowly evolving his his quirk and abilities as, you know, every moment goes on. I really think it's a huge bummer that Koichi is not in the main series. I, please tell me he shows up at some point, even like as a cameo. The guy is so cool. They, <laughs> I, I, the, that should be the main series in my opinion like oh vigilantes is so good like, every criticism i feel like i have towards my hero is fixed in vigilantes oh the school's too boring there's too many characters it's overwhelming no school <laughs> actually that's a different issue in this series he has school but he doesn't go to it oh. <laughs> the characters are super manageable there's they introduce them like very slowly, like maybe like three and then four and then two, you know, they add a little bit more at a time than they take some out, depending on the story. Um, and then also they have like connections to like the pro heroes. The pro heroes make little cameos. Not every pro hero is in it because not every pro hero should be involved in it. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a story still involving all for one, but you know, in like the drug trigger and things like that. Uh, so it's like, oh, I don't know. It's just, it's so good. I wish, I wish everybody was reading it and I wish it had its own anime. I don't understand how this does not have an anime and the main series does. I don't understand how the main series is so popular um, <laughs> that, that it has as many volumes and as big of sales as it does. Meanwhile, Vigilantes, I feel like not enough people are reading. It's probably one of the most talked about spinoffs, but like, that's a low bar. That's real low. Okay, this is the bar for sequels. This is spinoffs. Okay, even sequels, people are like talking about Boruto more than they talk about Vigilantes, and it's like all the people who talk about Boruto, how bad it is. Same thing with Super. People like to shit on Super for whatever reason too, but Super's really good as well, and Boruto's been getting good too. Um, but like Vigilantes is consistently really good. I'd have to say it's like a complete complete um, wasted potential. Like, I don't understand how people are missing it. Hidden gem, maybe is what I'm trying to say. Anyways, if you're not reading Vigilante, the rant is that you should probably be reading Vigilante. Even if you don't like My Hero, it, it really is so much better than My Hero. Uh, oh my God, speaking of things so much better than My Hero, Dark Gathering, holy shit, this, this series is pretty dark and twisted. <laughs> dark Gathering is right. So, okay, here's the premise, all right, this guy, um, has this hand, okay? This hand is like got all these nerves that grow out of it and he was possessed. And so he wears a glove over it so he doesn't like hurt himself and he has to get it trimmed every once in a while. Anyways, he's always drawn to these like haunted like spots. Every time he gets to these super supernatural encounters, you know, ghost comes and tries to eat him because he's like looking like some tasty bait. You know, like, mm, look at that booty. You know, the, boot, the ghost is like, eat that shit up. And so they try to, okay, right? And so he meets this girl because he's, he's tutoring and like people are trying to tell him that he needs to get out there more, be more social. And so he takes a tutoring job to kind of help him with that. Uh, and so this girl's like not actually interested at all in tutoring. She has these little skulls for, high they, for eyes. They say it's a birth defect. Anyways, so he's got to tutor this girl. This girl is huge into the supernatural. She's trying to catch the ghost that killed her mom's, uh, but not really killed her mom or her parents, but the ghost presumably killed them both and then kidnapped their mom's soul. So she's like, yeah, my mom's dead, whatever. But I can see my dad's soul. Where's my mom's soul? Like, it's nowhere to be found. So she's trying to find it. But this manga is super creepy. Look at this phone booth thing. They do this cool thing where you have to turn the book to the side. I haven't seen that in like freaking forever. That's a, such a sick effect. 
Um, more, more balls need to do that. They have a lot of just like, uh, what's the word for it? Really grotesque um, imagery and just descriptions. Um, this series is pretty dark. The girl who is like a, the exorcist, look, she tears, she brings the uh, spirits that she captures into these dolls, these stuffed animals. And then she brings the stuffed animals into her room. Her room is covered with stuffed animals. And the stuffed animals tear apart and just torture the ghosts that she just like exercised. So that way she can add it to her army. She uses all the ghosts that she beats to help her when she finds the ghost that kidnapped her mom. And once she finds that ghost, she's going to unleash literal hell on the ghost just to save her mom. And I was like, what the heck is going on? But yeah, you can see like this phone booth straight up blood explosion everywhere all over the phone booth because it's it's haunted and it's killing people uh so yeah they got some pretty disturbing imagery here um i really do like the series the main character is very reluctant to help this main girl because wouldn't you know it he thinks she's fucking crazy and she needs help and like forget the fact that she's interested in exercising spirits she is like willing to kill herself and others to to get this to this goal um, even though she's like 11 or 12, something like that, you know? And so he's like, no, you're messed up. You need therapy. Like, this is not right. And he's like, listen, you have to know that this is not right. Cause she's got like this caretaker who's his like uh, childhood friend. He's like, this is like, not right. This girl should not be this way. And she's like, I really feel indebted to this girl. I really just want to help her out. And she's trying to help you out too and help you get your curse left. Apparently there's a hint that his nerve hand is like actually like helping ward off demons, but I don't really know. Uh, but like, yeah, that's kind of the main concept to that series. I really enjoy it uh, quite a lot so far. Uh, definitely recommend checking that one out too. One of the newer Shonen Jump series. I definitely think it's it's worth reading. I'm not sure if it got canceled because most of the good ones do get canceled, I feel like. But that's what I read. The typical, uh, you know, 12 slash 13 because sometimes um, Astro Boy counts as 3, sometimes it counts as 4. I guess it just depends on how the wind blows. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know what you thought about the reading log today down below if you guys enjoyed it, if you guys didn't enjoy it. If you guys just like really have this manga you're burning for me to read and have my opinion on, let me know and I'll be sure to get a look. Until next time, bye bye.